data is the new gold. Big data is already driving the global economy. We, we are now buying more and more tailored products and services by just a click. And with this, companies are having a major big new business opportunity. According to McKinsey, it is estimated that big data is going to generate an additional market value of three trillion US dollar each year. Big, da big data doesn't only the growing importance of big data doesn't only mean more business for businesses. It also has potential of bringing us better quality of life, as it does already in each of our daily life. So we, without realizing, depend on data each day. For example, when you come from your home or your hotel this morning to this place, or even to work each day, we, we are able to make better decisions on which route to take from on Google Maps. And that actually saves a lot of our time, our time each day. And this is not at all different for people in emerging economies. Actually, to quite the contrary, the, the use of data-driven technology is even more common there. Let's take, for example, the online payment platform WeChat, popular in China, or the Rise Services Grab, which is popular in Southeast Asia. So we exchange data for convenience, and also provide gl the global economy with valuable information. Data is the new gold. And similar to every other past and present currencies, be it gold or goods, the approaches in accessing and the approaches in accessing and monetizing data is often ethically controversial. Data is a byproduct of reality. The reality in which of the existence of our existence on the digital world. The actual creation of value only occurs when that information is processed and analyzed. And that is exactly what companies are doing with our information to, make, to create business value out of our information, with or without our consent. Almost all of us use applications like Facebook, Google Maps, WhatsApp, as we are very well aware that companies use our personal information just as much to do bad as they are promising not to do evil. I think we all have followed the Facebook Cambridge Analytical scandal, where personal information is used to distort election. Another example would be the targeted advertisement I mentioned in the beginning. So we are actually made to buy more things than what we actually need. So data-driven technology has so many positive impacts on our life, but we actually they do pay for it with our personal information. The negative impacts of data-driven technology or exploiting personal inf in information is being looked at from politics, media, science, but what we observe is that emerging economies are usually being left out from this discussion, partly because those big tech, digital tech companies usually started working with markets with higher purchasing power. But we are actually living in the reality in which those low but growing income and very high population countries became the new targets of this tech company. 
And the people in the, in the rural areas in emerging economies and that data are especially very valuable to the global businesses. This triggers higher concerns about negative, Im negative effects of using data-driven technology, especially on um, the less educated population in rural areas around the world. They are maybe more vulnerable of being exploited as a cons consumer through exact profiling by large corporations. With less awareness and oversight, they might not always know the implication of using applications or sharing personal information online. And they might be less able to manage and protect their digital identity. Even less, they are able to participate in and benefit from the economy that is, that is increasingly relying on selling data. Development Corporation and GAZ are actually well positioned to not only mitigate negative consequences, but also to play a defining role in how we can use data in a positive, responsible, and sustainable manner. This can be done by contributing to with ethical, ethical and sustainable products, which prove the positive side and also push the narrative of a technology. International cooperation can use make use of the sector through the strong network of experts around the world, through its cultural awareness, through its good reputation, especially in emerging economies. Technology itself is generally neutral in the sense that it can be used in both ways, such with positive and such with negative implications. What is most important or what matters a lot is the public interpretation or basically the narrative in which how technology is being used in practice eventually. So it is very, very important that we set positive use cases of how we can use a technology so that that will set an example of how society at large and also how government would perceive the role of te technology in the longer run. And that will also help determine the way regulation is looking at technology and how governments are acting on its negative effects. So I guess now you might be questioning, so how can international cooperation and GIZ contribute to this? Let me show an example, which is our GIZ startup groups. As data is driving economic activity and social impact, our company GIZ needs to continuously increase its knowledge one way through collecting field data. And this is especially in rural areas and disconnected in this rural and disconnected areas around the world. And this is, to an increasing extent, is being done digitally. Groots was kick-started by the GIZ Innovation Fund competition last year, an entrepreneurship program aimed to introduce more digital innovation in GIZ projects. We won the, we won the competition and were awarded the seed financing to turn our prototype into an actual marketable product. Groots is now a data collection service for private and public companies, sourcing grassroots expertise and metrics in emerging markets while rewarding our data providers. Before we founded Groots, 
like many other GIZ projects, we usually hire a consultant to collect data. And the problem is the data is often already outdated by the time we receive it. They usually collect and research secondary data only, and they are hugely expensive. Groups leverages GIZ structural advantages to collect few data that is instant, primary, and cheap. We find ways to access and provide the data needed while putting the well-being of our data providers at the core of our service. Let me make it a bit more specific. In one of our application cases in the renewable energy sector, we wanted to find out the diesel price on remote Thai islands in order to assess the competitiveness of alternative energy. In this case, we interact with users through a chatbot on line messaging application, which is very popular in Thailand, similar to WhatsApp here. So have a look at how our prototype works. My name is Mina from Kham Yai Island. We don't have enough power, but we need it. We need more power to cool the fridge. And the kids need light to go around the island safely. We're now relying on diesel generators, but they're noisy and smell bad. They cost me a lot of money and pollute our island. I want a better life. That's why I respond to Bruce when my friend asked me to contribute to getting power to our island. And it's actually quite easy. Bruce welcomes me with this lovely video, which explains why I need to answer the questions. It asks about my job and on which island I live. Now I'm submitting the price for a liter of diesel here. That's it. Now Bruce offers to share diesel prices from nearby islands with me. Oh, on Gop Anyi, they are paying 5 baht more. I didn't know that. Let me share groups with my friends. They need clean and reliable energy too. I hope that one day we have enough power on the island for our kids to be able to learn and have a good future. That will be a dream come true. So what is unique about our solution groups is that we are sourcing data more sustainably by rewarding those who have field expertise and first-hand information. While we collect data that is super relevant for our work, we are also engaging with the beneficiaries and the experts on the ground who are actually the source of data. This way, they become more aware that the knowledge they have is actually very valuable. They would be able to, or they would be more aware of the implication of their digital self, and they would be able to manage it better. On top of this, they can monetize their knowledge and can participate in and benefit from the data economy. Groots wants to contribute to a world where, where people and communities own their digital selves and participate in the data economy on equal terms. Data is the new gold. The opportunities and value it offers could be better distributed to where it is most needed. Thank you very much.